Well, hello, my East Auburn friends. Here is a few more pages of the one and only Bob. Miss you. Full wag. Are you ready to head over to the park, George asks, as he passes through the living room. He's carrying two flashlights and a roll of masking tape. Yep, Julia said, and I do a little head tilt to show I'm intrigued by the conversation. The place where Ivan and Ruby live is called the Wild World Zoological Park and Sanctuary, but everybody just calls it the park. George works at the park as head groundskeeper, which means I've got some sway, and everybody who's employed there loves Julia. Give me a minute. I just need to grab my coat, says George. Straight home after that, though, Julia, says Sarah, just in case the weather gets worse. One minute, the weatherman's saying we're going to have a little shower. Next minute, storm of the century. Julia scratches my head. I thought Hurricane Gus wasn't coming till tomorrow. Sometimes they change course, says Sarah. They can be unpredictable. You know, George says with a wink, in the old days, they only named hurricanes after women. Julia groans. Ugh, oh, that is so sexist. It's not just the wind that I'm worried about on this one, George said. It's the storm surge that could be a problem, you know, flooding. Julia tries to make me wear her mom's latest creation, a knitted dog sweater with security written on it, which I suppose is an ironic reference to my petite size, but I politely decline. All right, you win, Julia sighs. Ready for your walk, Bob? At the mention of the word walk, I go all crazy mutt, so it's clear that I'm on board with the idea. Humans love it when we get silly. I think they're so weighed down by people problems that sometimes they need to be reminded what happy looks like. Julie attaches my string. I try for a little tug of war, but she refuses to buy it. Let's go see Ivan and Ruby, she says. Just hearing those names sends my tail into a full wag. Good words, bad words. I've never met a dog who didn't get all big old grin on his kisser when walk slipped into the conversation. Dogs understand more than you might think. The Nature Channel says we're about as smart as the average human toddler. Two-year-olds, my fuzzy rump, we're a million times brainer than some babbling rug rat. There was a dog on that Man's Best Friend show who supposedly understood like a thousand human words. Border Collie, I think. Those guys really need to switch to decaf. The narrator was gushing about this wonder dog, and I'm like, well, duh, Brainiac, of course we understand people. Not everything, mind you, and some of us are more attentive than others. Depends a lot on just how interesting your humans happen to be. Certain words will really cause our ears to perk up. The classics, treat, walk, frisbee, and bacon. Oh, and don't forget the swear words like vet, bath, fireworks, and vacuum cleaner. We always hear those. Clock versus moon. Julie and I wait by the front door while George says goodbye to Sarah. I think maybe the hardest thing for me about being domesticated, a pet if you insist, is that I can't control my own schedule. If I had my way, I'd hang out with Ivan and Ruby all day every day. Unfortunately, humans love their clocks. Dogs, we use the sky to tell time, like the sensational creature. Sky says it's dawn, time to eat. It's noon, time to eat. It's afternoon, time to eat. It's dusk, time to eat. It's midnight, time to eat. Point is, it's always time to eat. Dogs have a thing for the moon, too, like wolves and coyotes and our other relatives. No calendars for us. Moon looks like a claw. Moon looks like half a pancake. Moon looks like a tennis ball. Moon looks like a claw again. A chunk of time has passed. But humans, nope, that's not enough. It's not a chunk, it's a month. It's not just dawn, it's 6.32 a.m. on a Thursday. Oh boy, oh boy, we better hurry up and go to school or go to the office or change the baby. But who gives a woof about feeding that poor, starving, sad-eyed, grumpy, tumbling dog? After a spell, I got used to the comings and goings of Julia and her mom and her dad, but it keeps changing. Julia leaves early for school and is gone most of the day. She returns home excited and energized and good sense mostly, but every now and then she comes back smelling a little like me after a visit to the dog trainer, battled weary and ready to claw under the covers. Sarah, who was pretty sick for a while, is feeling fine again, thank goodness. But she went back to work, and she's always all, away all day, too. And George, who has a job at Ivan's place, works five, sometimes six days a week. That means it's just me and the guinea pigs for a lot of the time. I have a doggy door and an outside run, but it's not the same thing as touring the neighborhood with your person. Peeing without a potential audience is like talking to yourself. 
Sometimes I'm the teeniest bit jealous of Ivan and Ruby. They always have someone around. Which is crazy, I know. I'm free, and they're not. But there it is. Told you, I'm no saint. The Shelter I know our route to Ivan and Ruby by heart, and I can't help tugging a bit, even though I'm not supposed to. It's been a couple days since I've seen my pals, and I need my friend fix like I need air and water and belly rubs. We don't live far, down to the end of the street, around a corner, good news source there, then a few more blocks. When I walk Julia, well, okay, I'm supposed to look like she's walking me, but I beg to differ. There's a place we pass that always makes me jumpy and bummed. It's the animal shelter. I know it's a good place, a space for pets who don't have a safe home of their own. When I was abandoned on the highway just a few weeks old, a nice cage and a soft towel in it and a bowl of fresh water, well, I would have given just about anything for that. But still, when I walk by and I hear all those desperate barks and meows and squeaks, it gets to me. Sometimes having great hearing is a pain. Thing is, I realize I have a home and a gang and that doesn't, and I try not to think about stuff like that, you know? I mean, it's not like I can do anything about their tough breaks, right? And in fairness, maybe those animals aren't like me. I've always been resilient and hardworking, kind of sort. Maybe some of those guys even made their own bad luck. Don't get me wrong. I try to be a nice guy. I do what I can to make the world a better place. Sure, I chat with the guinea pigs. I lick the strawberry jelly off Julia's hands. I do my wagon dance when the rents come home to make them feel good. You scratch my back, I scratch yours. But it's like I said before, you got to look out for numero uno. Guess that's why the shelter harshes my mellow. It's just, you know, I'd rather not have to hear those guys every time I walk by. Makes me sad. It reminds me of the bad old days. Wow, Bob had a lot to say in those few pages about the shelter and about being a pet. He says he has to stay home alone with the guinea pigs a lot, and I got to thinking about that when I read that chapter, that my dog has to stay here all day by herself too. I wonder if my dog is really lonely or likes the peace and quiet. What do you think? Do you think that your pet, if you have a pet or imagine you had a pet, do you think they like staying home by themselves all day? Or do you think it would be a problem and they would be very lonely? Tell me what you think. Miss you guys.